Welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome to the beautiful west coast of Canada in southern British Columbia. Uh, most of Canada right now is digging out of snow um, and as you can see here we're still driving our old vehicles around enjoying the weather. Now uh, I mean it's not warm out but it also isn't cold. Anyways we wanted to introduce you before she gets put away for the winter to Betsy. The most reliable vehicle I've ever owned. This truck's never been restored. It's never had anything major done to it. It's not the fanciest truck on the planet. It's not the nicest. But it gets the job done. So what we have here is the factory 383 big block. Um, uh, many moons ago it had a battery explosion. So that's, uh, that's something that needs to be dealt with. But we'll get there. Currently, it's running a uh, Edelbrock four barrel. I never know how to pronounce that properly, do you? No. I can never get it. Nick's garage, it. Nick's garage says Edelbrock, I, I don't know. Anyways, it's an Edelbrock <coughs> um, 750 CFM mechanical secondary four barrel. Uh, we've upgraded it to uh, electronic ignition with a Mopar orange box and of course electronic distributor still running the old style uh, voltage regulator she has a little tendency to overcharge but we just keep an eye on her for now uh, closed loop cooling system put in it because i used the truck and i don't want to be dumping antifreeze on the ground uh, aluminum radiator uh, ordered from uh, champion cooling i recommend it to anybody this particular rad is technically for a uh, 68 Dodge Charger with a 440 in it. Uh, we adapted it to fit the truck because nobody has an aftermarket aluminum radiator and the original split the tank open on it. Right here is just a little uh, transmission cooler. Helps keep that big 727 cool. Uh, this truck had power steering to begin with. It's gone now. It was a uh, very odd type any old Mustang guys out there you might you might know it uh, they had a, a, a hydraulic cylinder on the tie rod that would assist you with steering we've I canceled that out and set up the steering box to be manual um, upgraded the uh, it still has drum brakes but I went with a little bit newer master again you have to uh, excuse how dirty it is I mean we drive it and it's a survivor so one day when we can afford it hopefully because you all will subscribe it'll get restored so d200 camper special 383 big block hooked to the factory automatic 727 transmission dana 60 hd in the rear with 410s and uh sure grip which is the chrysler uh terminology for posi traction uh etc etc um drives me nuts online when i find that out or I see that they've said Posse, and it's a Dodge. So Dodge is sure grip, Jeep is track lock, Chevrolet is Posse traction, and uh, Ford, I, I don't know, most of the time they're on a tow truck, so I wouldn't know what they have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's about it underneath the hood. Uh, it's wired here so I can tow a trailer with it. This is for the brake controller. Um, all this is probably gonna get redone as soon as we can afford it. I, I use the truck quite a bit to drive. I love the old girl. And I mean, she's still kicking. It's over 50 years old and it's never been restored. It's never had paint work. Uh, the engine's never been out. The transmission's never been out. Um, I'm going to close the hood harder because it's old. There we go. Oh, there's a plate on. Quick peek inside here. Come on. Oh. Oh boy. So this is all stock inside, uh, except for the aftermarket gauges there. Here, let, me, let me take over for a minute here, Uncle Bobo. So here we got the obligatory aftermarket gauges, volt, oil pressure, and water temperature. Uh, factory dash automatic shifter uh, the thing on the bottom of the shifter there that's for the brake controller that's uh, tucked up underneath the dash uh, same with that little screen you see at the column that tells me how uh, how much energy is going to the brakes on a scale of 1 to 10 and it's old so we got the fire extinguisher I mean she's not fancy in here it's uh, 
It's never been restored. Custom Princess Auto floor mat headliner. Gotta love it. It does the job for now. These snaps here on the back window. Uh, the truck had a camper on it from the day uh, it got picked up until I believe 1998. And these snaps, the back window was out of the truck and these snaps went to a leather uh, tube that went to the camper. This truck's sister is a 1971 uh, short box adventurer. I bought both the trucks together years ago and uh, I had intended to restore them both at the same time but I got incredibly sick and uh, yeah it takes a lot of money to restore vehicles. We got the custom rawhide sun visors put in there by the previous owner. Uh, I'm only the second person to own the truck. So when you take a look in the back here, uh, I haven't rhino lined it yet because I intend to restore the truck and I'll get that done when I do it. But there's no big dents or impact marks inside the box because it had a camper in it its entire life. I find it funny when people are shocked when I use the truck for work. It'll tow heavy trailers. It, uh, it'll haul pretty much anything I want it to. It's got a 10 ton hitch on the back. It's the same size as the new Rams come with. It does attract a lot of attention. So she does have the odd flaw. As uh, Scott would say, he was grandpa's old whiskey dent. Still has the lens on it though. How it didn't break the lens, I'm not sure. But uh, that's a classy whiskey dent right there. I haven't been able to find any body filler in the whole truck, so we're doing good there. That's the factory option bumper. It actually is designed to slide on the frame rails to come out for a camper. Now that's not the way I have it set up obviously, but it's pretty neat nonetheless. So if you guys haven't seen Cold War Motors on YouTube, make sure you hit them up. Big shout out to all the agents and especially Scott and Dean. Uh, you gotta watch the channel just for Dean. If you haven't seen Cold War Motors on YouTube, check them out for sure. So another, just some more stuff about the truck. We're just running some basic white spokes on it. Uh, the original rim size is a 16.5. It's no good for anybody. They're impossible to find tires for. Uh, fuel tank wise, it's got two shadow tanks and the cab tank. This tank's completely taken out of the truck. This one's deactivated. We're just running it on the one saddle tank at the moment. There's no need to haul around that much fuel anyways basic stock inside I'll give you a quick look from this side I always enjoy this this is the factory installed dealer prepped uh, brake controller that actually used to run off the hydraulics neat little piece to have in there just a cheapy little tack to keep an eye on the rpms and uh, this is a custom cab so it had the option of the white steering wheel of course it's got the automatic with the dash shift and that bezel right here was considered an option same with the two sun visors now those sun visors are the custom ones. And that's a custom Blake dog. <laughs> we'll hop in, I'll give her a quick fire up here and we'll let you guys listen to the talk. basic two and a half inch exhaust it's got thrust welded turbo mufflers on it basically it's a cheap alternative to running the Flowmaster Super 40 and it's a little quieter I prefer the sound that the truck makes and as you can see she's in amazing condition she's always been taken care of and loved I mean heck when you start naming your cars that tells you something